Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for invitation to come here. My name is Mari Trossi, and I'm a math teacher, and also I have been a principal, and I'm an author of nine math books, and e-learning math material, Baths to Math, like it was mentioned. And I was one of the lucky who was one of the top ten finalists this year. Richard was last year. And it's amazing competition, because the aim of the competition is to lighten up the profession of the teacher. The teachers are most important in the society, because if we respect teachers, we respect education, and education is the key of the success of the nation. And I was almost as near as Richard of one million dollars. <laughs> so it was Hanan Rub from Palestine who was the winner, and she's a great woman. Mm -hmm. So this year I heard that there will be 20,000 teachers all around the world comp combining in this competition. And I hope that next year, most of you will take part of it, because I think it's an important message to the whole society, all over the world, what is the position of the teachers. And I think today we are even more important as uh, peacemakers. Think about what's going on in the world. Why I was elected? Maybe one reason is of my passion to math education. I have done 30 years to make the change of math education, and I have been teaching in the middle schools. So most students all over the world think that math is boring, meaningless, and even frightened. When I introduce myself to somebody and shake and I said, I'm a math teacher, people go this like. It comes so deep, the hate or the frighten, and the cold feeling to the mathematics. And also I have heard about United States, for example, that there are TV programs when they are discussing that maybe we don't even need any more algebra in their school. Even in Finland, when I listened to a radio station, very clever people said, I have never used math. Oh my God, it's not true. People don't see it. And why? This is the reason. This is how we think is math. That it's only numbers and letters, there's no connection to the real life, no connection to the children. And that's the reason why people think that math is so far away, so cold, there's no emotion, it's difficult to learn, and this is not true. And of course, if children have low confidence in mathematics, they don't want to study these subjects. And this is the problem all over the world, that we don't have students enough to study STEM subjects. And we know that their future occupations and jobs, many of them need these qualities. So, I think that math hasn't changed the teaching of mathematics in 100 years. Everything else is changing in the school, but not the math. And even OECD is also now worried. Last month, they published questions for mathematics teachers, 10 questions, and how PISA can help answer them. Think about, OECD is publishing not about languages, not about biology, but they are publishing something about the mathematics. Because in 17 countries, the situation is quite same. And very sad of this public, I, I read that eight students from 10 are solving problems by memorizing. So we know what kind of the lectures are. Teacher is in front of the classrooms asking something and students are saying one question, right or wrong. It can't be. The world is not this like that there is only one answer. There are often many answers. And also in mathematics we have 
problems where we can have many answers. So, when math is the best in the school, it can be answering the skills of the future. World, Forum, World Economic Forum said that the skills what we need very near are complex problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, people management, coordinating, flexibility, negotiation, and if the math education is its best, this is what it can answer. It can answer and help students to develop these skills. So what we have to do? I very easily think that we have to think math education like a pillar of four corners. Interdisciplinary math, social learning, learning by doing and practice. And the problem is that all over the world we are doing mostly, 90% I would say, practice, practice, practice. Boring, boring task after one, after the other. I have been lucky, I have been in, in the research where I could see uh, lessons from 10 countries and I have been traveling a lot. And it really seems that the math lessons are very similar all over the world. So the problem is also very similar. Let's go these pillars and, uh, and I tell some of the examples what it means so you get a larger picture. Interdisciplinary math means that it's a big theme. And in that big theme, students are solving problems with the help of mathematics. With the Finnish Red Cross, I made a big theme of humanitarian aid. Uh, in Africa, one country get in the war, and 1,020,000 people has to escape to the neighbor. So they have to put their 11 camps, and students know exactly the real numbers of refugees in every camp. They know where the camp situated. And the problem of Red Cross was how to feed those people. And they transported the food every two weeks, so children has to count how many drugs they need to develop the food. Uh, they know their, their geography situation of their camps, so they need, knew how much they need time. And also they have to count the energy of the food, what every people needed to survive in those camps. This kind of mathematics is very basic, with big numbers, but it is meaningful for the students. They are solving anyway the problems of today and the future. They have to get the feeling that they can solve the problems, and where they use the math, it's meaningless. Another example is that Last spring, uh, there was an Erasmus project, and we had the visitors of the fifth grades from uh, German and UK, and uh, was it in Italy. And my job was to teach them statistics. They start to study statistics on the fifth grade. And usually we underestimate students, so I cut statistics from newspapers, so that every group got different statistics. And the job, what they have to do, was to read those statistics and make questions to each other. And of course, it was very demanding for the Finnish students, because the only language they could use is English. So, they were using a lot of their knowledge, and also at the same time working together as a team. And you can see from the picture that they are doing the job. But of course I'm a mentoring and I have to know all the time what's going on in the classroom. 
And after that, they begin to make statistics about themselves. How many siblings you have? Do you have pets? How you came to school today? So that every group get different task. And of course, when it was concerning about themselves, they were interested again. And then they have to decide what kind of graphics they will do it. With hands and then with computers. We need computers, but we have to think when we use them. There has to be very meaningful also for those computers. And then they send it, those graphics to me so that I could follow what kind of solutions everybody had done. And think, they are fifth graders, and think I do this kind of job. Not easy, not easy even adults. So, I use students that they are sitting in the groups of four people. So they can do individual work, pair share, and in group works. Because there are also research that if the group is too big, there are sometimes people who are working, do, doing the work and the other ones are lazy. Or if it's too small, there don't come enough creativity interaction. So I have found that number four is very practical to do in the classrooms and they are working very easily together. Then what about learning by doing? That is maybe the most known. This example is about uh, um, when you have to estimate, round, measure and round. So first they have to estimate different amounts, lengths, areas, volumes. After that they round it to tens, hundreds, thousands, depends on what is the amount. And after that, they will measure, and again, round. Usually in schools, they don't practice a lot of estimation, what is very important in our normal life. And then if there is rounding, it's very often very separate. But now there is a connection what they are learning. Here, this group has found a very nice way to measure the amount of things they have got. But this, this group didn't find a very good solution. So they also learn different kind of strategies, how they solve even small problems. So I go to this group and a little bit begin to talk with them. I, I disturb them. And they just forget, oh my God, how many did we have? And then they notice the strategy was not good, but still they have fun. They are learning. I'm also teaching teachers. I have been teaching in, in last time in Africa. And uh, I think when teachers are learning as students, they get the same joy, joy of learning. And of course, it's very demanding when I think about teachers in Africa. First, when I was in, in China and I noticed that, that there was a teacher in front asking, and all 60 students said at the same time the answer. And I thought, oh my God, that's not individual. Individualism is learning and teaching. But here in Africa, I understood there was 90 students in the classroom. So we are really lucky. We can really change our education, because usually I think we have about less than 40 students in the classroom, or even 30, or even 40, 20. So I think we have to put the mathematics some positive feelings, not the negative I told that when I'm introducing myself. Warm memories, and also when you have warm memories, you are learning very, very deeply. This is only a picture of uh, when they are learning about unique exchange. I think many adults, if I would ask, how much is two square meters, 15 square decimeters as square meters? I think the comma would 
come to the wrong place. And it's because we have taught earlier students by memorizing, just as OECD report said. Eight of ten students are solving all math problems by memorizing, not without understanding. And of course, we have to give the opportunity for them to find. I don't mean that they have to find everything themselves. It has taken hundreds, thousands of years for a human to build the mathematics and the structure of the mathematics. But there are so many points where they can find the solution themselves, so we have to give them the joy. And of course, in strengthen self-esteem them, when they trust on themselves. Then about social learning. There are a lot of different examples, let's take even one. This is about weekend shopping, and uh, the list of the shopping is for a family of four, and it's so long that the group has to make decision how to divide the task in this time. And after they have estimated it, if the shop is near, they can go to the shop, or if the shop is far, there is the internet shop. And again, they have to decide how how to divide the task so that they are ready in the time. And as a math teacher, I look the prices beforehand and make the change in the list so that they have to think how I divide this decimal number or how I multiply. It comes meaningful. They want to learn. We can make the lesson so that they want to learn. Not so that I am in front of the classroom and I said, Today we have the lesson of multiplication of the decimal numbers. No way. It has to be meaningful. Something related to their life. And also when they are working in groups, there's a power of the group. They have to debate. They have to say why I think so. They learn from different... They... they they got different guys thinking, different solutions, and not only one question and one answer. So, math really can be interesting also, and challenging. This don't mean that it is too easy. It depends on the level of the students, and we as the teacher, we can do it. And of course, the practice is important. It don't mean that the practice is not important. Sometimes teachers are asking me, do I have to change everything? And I know, no, no, no. Just even you change one of the tenth, then it, it makes a change. Actually, they are now, uh, Turku University, making a research. I'm, I'm training teachers so that I don't go to the classroom. I train them once in the month, and now they are looking if they can make the change. Uh, to the students and to their attitudes. Of course, the technology is important. But we have to look carefully what we give them. If, the, if it's the same task than earlier, only with the, some flowers and points, it's, non, it's, it's worthless. It's the same thing. But if it's well done, they really concentrate, and they really like to use technology. So we have to change the task when we are using technology. This is an example of a classification. That student has to classificate the triangles. They have to think, do I classificate them on the base of the angle of the side? Not so that the teacher comes to the classroom and say what are the names of triangles. So, my message is that math can be meaningful, it can, it can be interesting, it can be challenging, it can be fun. And uh, my message is that when we make the math to its position, it's also the quickest way 
to increase the well-awareness of the nation. I thank you very much, and if you want to follow me, I have a Twitter and Facebook, and just I hope that we make the change together. Thank you. Thank you very much.